you would not believe the job that I'm doing right now. We found this little bulge appearing under the mast step during our test sail. And on closer inspection, a little bit of blue powder next to it. I couldn't for the life of me work out what it was. So I jacked up the step, loosened off all the rigging and investigated. I feel like an archeologist. <laughs> what I prized out was the remains of what must have been a coin uh, under the step. It's good luck, supposedly, to leave a, uh, a little coin under the step when the mast is put on uh, and sealed into the boat. But for some reason, our lucky charm is fighting its way out. It's had enough of it. So I've managed to rescue what I can of the coin and uh, let that be a lesson to you. If you're thinking about putting anything for good luck under your aluminium mast step, just don't. Uh, just carry a four leaf clover instead, it's much easier, much safer. Or a credit card, that would be the modern equivalent. That would go fine, actually. When he said we found some money under the mask, I was like, oh my God, somebody left money. No, it's a one bloody coin, which is rotten. So here it is, some buried treasure under Bohemia's mask. Back to this, I missed it really. See, still know how to do it. And I still remember my favorite place. Put that out. Well, goodbye Banderas Bay. It's been a lovely temporary home for us uh, throughout hurricane season. And uh, the marina here, Paradise Village, has just been a wonderful uh, haven of peace. It's been a little bit of a wrench to tear ourselves off the dock there. We had to get out of the marina before we started growing roots. Um, but here we are sailing again and it feels wonderful. Banderas Bay is treating us to a fond farewell. Uh, flat waters and lovely uh, breeze coming from the nose. So we're just tacking our way gently out of the bay and uh, time to start sailing south. Let the adventures begin. And in case anybody cares, I am here too. He didn't <laughs> leave me on the dock, even though he threatened to. He clung on. He's got a tight grip, that first mate. Knuckles of steel. Another cruising season of paradise is awaiting the captain. Just putting this stack of dock lines away. It's gonna be a good few months before we'll be needing these again. So much space. We need a bigger boat. I'm not trusted with the dock lines. Can't do the knots. Haven't been trained. I put it on the beginner's course. Right up there next to greeting the seacocks, but apparently he was sick that day. It's great. First day at sea and it's howling. Howling. We've got 15 knots of apparent wind here. It's just perfect. He's going soft. Too much time on the dock. Well, yeah, look how much we're healing. That is howling to me. So, we are approaching Cabo Corrientes, which is like the Cape Horn of Mexico. And what do we do? We put our secret weapon up. Not quite sure whether that was clever. We'll really need to start watching the wind. And if it starts increasing any more than 10 knots, we need to pull it down. Pronto Tito. It's already up to 10. <laughs> this is our first time testing the new mini bowsprit and it's performing great so far. It's really holding the spinnaker line forward of our bow pulpit so nothing rubs and it's super sturdy. Nothing is flexing or bending uh, like the anchor roller used to. It wasn't really up to the job. So, uh, so far so good, really happy with it. Slowly but surely, we're starting to lose the wind. 
and we are just leveled with Cabo Corrientes. So we were hoping for more increased winds, but that's not happening. Not sure what the captain is going to do about that. High expectations here. I'm not sure what I can do about that. I'm putting a call upstairs for you. How about that? Our latest motto is secret to happy life, lower your expectations. Been doing it all my life and look how happy I am. <laughs> Not much I can say to that, is there? <laughs> Okay. Uh, I was going crazy in this swell. There's not much of it, but it's really uh, messing with our apparent wind. So we had to take it down. Uh, we're just gonna go slowly around the point, possibly turn on the engine. I'll see if I can resist temptation. And then the other side of the point, hopefully we'll have a bit more reliable wind. We are going to try a new anchorage, new for us anyway, uh, called uh, Punta Ipala. Uh, which is just over that way, uh, about 10 miles south of us. And this anchorage will allow us to break the journey from Banderas Bay uh, down to the next main bay uh, in two, so we don't need to do an overnighter. Punta Ipala is not the best of anchorages. It doesn't provide great shelter uh, from northerly weather. Uh, there's just a little bit that you can tuck into. Uh, so we're going to anchor really carefully and watch the conditions, and hopefully it'll all work out. Absolute worst case though, cut to 10 hours later, we're on a night sail <laughs> and we've just moved on down the line. And the first mate will not be happy about that. It's really started to pick up now. Uh, the afternoon winds have settled in and we've, uh, we're well south of the point. So it's funneling everything. You may recall that a while back, this is exactly the spot where we crash jibed. So I didn't want to let this point fool us twice. We've taken the main in and we're on headsail only while the winds start building. I'm really worried about this anchorage. The wind has really picked up. The sea picked up as well. I'm not quite sure whether we're going to be comfortable there. Worst case scenarios, we will not anchor and we will continue. Okay, change of plan. The wind has really picked up the swell as well and the anchorage is right there and there is no way we would have pleasant evening or even the night. So we're cutting our losses and we are going to continue. So we've already done 50 miles and we've got another 50 miles to go. Yay! So day one of a new adventure going south and we are doing overnight. Okay. Yeah, it's really picked up much faster than we ever imagined from looking at the forecast. Uh, this point has really lived up to its name. Uh, we're seeing about 25 knots of true wind as soon as we come into Angra uh, in Ipala, which is a marginal anchorage at best. Uh, we just know that the swell is going to be rolling into that place. Uh, so uh, probably for the best to, uh, to cut our losses and move on down south, even if it means a uh, unexpected overnighter. Yeah, this is not the conditions for marginal anchorages. With swell like this and 25 knot of wind, I want to wrap around Lagoon. Teas and coffees and selection of biscuits for the captain since we're doing the overnight sail. So he demanded it. Look at that. Electric kettle while on passage. Now I just need to wait. Here we are, high tea for two. Well, if only every unexpected night sail started out like this one, I could get used to them. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how strong these winds are getting. That point is really doing its job. 
Compared to what we had forecast, we thought we were gonna have a nice calm day and just try and get as much as possible out of the little wind that we had before we had to turn the engine on. The engine, we haven't touched it since we left the anchorage. So uh, hopefully uh, it'll continue into the night and we can sail all the way there. It's just a bit more than we bargained for for our first sail. Beggars can't be choosers. We've got our free travel, what more do you want? Upgrade. <laughs> Catamaran. <laughs> Shall I continue? <laughs> never know for sure because we didn't stick our noses into the entrance of that anchorage but I'm pretty sure we made the right call carry on going. The guidebooks that we have describe that as a marginal anchorage at best and on a day like today I think there's going to be breaking swell uh, coming all through it. Our rule is rather than being miserable on anchor you're better off carrying on going and at least being semi comfortable uh, on a night passage because you're not going to sleep either way you might as well get it over with. 110 miles and 20 hours later, we're finally here. I think it's time for bed or breakfast. I'm not sure which. We anchored at Bahia Chamela in the early hours. As the bay is wide open, a nighttime arrival coupled with a good chart was no problem. The small, friendly town and its four miles of unspoiled golden beaches were the perfect prescription to help us recover from the night shift. Morning, morning. Galley is in full operations. Can you believe that last night we went all night without dinner? The captain was not happy. So um, today I'm, um, I'm sucking up to him and I'm making omelette mushroom with cheese and tomatoes and toast and we have a French press coffee as well. It's like five star breakfast there. Eh? You got a lot of groveling to do. I hear sucking up but I don't hear mushrooms frying. <laughs> coming up, coming up. <laughs> mm. Huge omelette for the fearless captains coming up. He kept talking about his omelette for like 12 hours last night. But I wasn't in the right state to make an omelette at 3 a.m. Didn't stop him talking though, did it? Hopefully this will shut him up. <laughs> oh no, I'm making scrambled again. Oh, it's omelette, hang on. <laughs> I've told you, you pay peanuts, you get monkeys and monkeys can't do omelettes. <laughs> it will do. Captain's got low expectations anyway. Well, that's the secret to happy life. Well, it's starting to look a little bit more like an omelette, but I think after the night passage the captain has just had, he deserves a perfectly round shaped omelette. Can't get the crew these days. You see, there's a big difference between what you want and what you can get. And here it is on my plate. <laughs> oh, it's always something. We only stayed one day and we need to go. There's another low, it's not a hurricane, but it's another low forming and in about 10 or 12 hours, this place is gonna be a rock and roll. It's gonna create some massive swell. So we're trying to find a south or southwest protected anchorage. It's the calm before the storm. And in 12 hours, it's gonna be mayhem from over there. Bad news is I have to disturb the first mate's coffee break. It's time to move. We really thought that the cyclone season was over in the Eastern Pacific uh, with the last one that rolled in about a week and a half ago. Uh, so we set off from uh, 
Puerto Vallarta from our safe marina, thinking that we'd be entering some calm waters with not much wind and no tropical storm danger. But two of them are forming at the moment and we are keeping an eye on them, a close eye I should say. Uh, one of them is just a few hundred miles uh, south of us and that is going to produce some uncomfortable swell uh, over the next few days rolling into this anchorage we expect. So we've got to find some shelter from the southwest. There's another one uh, which is projected to be uh, a proper tropical cyclone uh, in the next three, four days. Uh, that's well south of us, but we're keeping an eye on that as well. So uh, a lot more activity than we bargained for when we set off from our lovely safe uh, marina. But that's what you get when you just pinch the end of hurricane season. We got bored. Coffee break is resumed. Hurricane, no hurricane. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, nice and tight, please. <laughs> yes, sir, straight away, sir. Uh, Lovely. And uh, was there a refill on that morning coffee? Seriously, I feel like I'm running a cafe. <laughs> Pedro's Cafeteria. <laughs> you should read the reviews of Pedro's Cafeteria on the internet before you go, if I were you. There's a couple of suspect servings. One review says, nice place, shame about the staff. <laughs> Wonder who wrote that? <laughs> who could it be? Yeah, who wrote that? I'm gonna find you. <laughs> oh, the gossip started again. Have your coffee. I switched that off. Thank you. It's too early in the morning for this. <laughs> sailing, motoring, sailing, coffees, refills. It's only nine o'clock. <laughs> I like my shake and not stirred. Special thanks in this episode go to our latest patrons for keeping Bohemia's crew sailing three sheets to the wind. Thank you to Bart and Shannon who sailed their 30 foot Olsen out of Washington. And thank you to our longtime Facebook fan Alcione. Woo, thank you so much, and here's to you. El Strongo. I've got a flamingo in my eye. <laughs> The Bohemia store is now opening its arms to oppressed first and second mates everywhere. Check it out at store.sailingbohemia.com. Where's a sudden gust of wind when you need one? <laughs> If you've had a second-rate dining experience at Pedro's Cafeteria, then please tell us about it below in your comments, and the staff will be more than happy to take them on board.